taking charge of his life and becoming unstoppable no matter what kind of background you come from. You do not worship Ambedkar, but you emulate his life. But no matter what society sets for you, you are unstoppable. See, unfortunately all leaders are being appropriated by somebody. Huh? If you say Sardar Patel, Congress will say he was a congressman, why are you talking about him? If you say Ambedkar, they say he was a Dalit, why are you talking about him? <laughs> All the people who worked for this nation, their being inspiration for everybody in this country is important, somehow. See, I… to put it in his own words, uh, he talked about democracy not being just a form of government, but this is a way of human beings expressing, uh, <clears throat> you know, respect and reverence to each other. These are… The, these are his words. So, he's talking about reverence to each other. Reverence to each other, if somebody has to talk about it, in a way it is a spiritual process, all right? So he's talking about social democracy, not political democracy. Political de democracy we have, on the paper, by law, we are all equal, but socially we are not. No society manages to equate every human being, that'll never happen, that's another matter. But equal opportunity must happen. Equality may not happen per se, but equal opportunity must happen. Unfortunately, that's still yet to be achieved. Though by law, all of us have equal opportunity, socially, we still don't have equal opportunity. Variety of uh, people are in many ways eliminated from this opportunity or not available for this opportunity to reach them. For that to happen, it's most important that… See, spiritual process means just this that your identity is not with your body. <clears throat> Once your identity is not with your body, it's not about parentage anymore. It's not about pedigree. The privileges of pedigree must go. Only then there will be a social democracy. But privileges of pedigree are still continuing. Who is your father is still of some consequence. This must go. Who my father is not my… not your issue, that may be a personal issue for me. Nothing to you, who I am is all that matters to you. <clears throat> this has to come in the society, it's not happened yet. We are in many ways practicing feudalism through a democratic system. Why whenever there's an election, there's so much talk about caste, creed, religion, who you pray to, what caste you belong to, what does it matter? But it matters because we are practicing feudalism through democratic means. Everybody knows uh, if you get this caste, what is a percentage? If you get that religion, what is a percentage? <clears throat> Ambedkar's vision was a social democracy, not just political democracy. Because political democracy, any democracy for that matter, is an endless debate and a confusion. It is worthwhile only when we achieve social democracy. Only political democracy is actually an impediment in many, many ways. Well, we don't get there straight away, we have to have political democracy first and then reach out to social democracy, that's what we are doing. But after seventy years, I would say we are going a bit slow. So you are a man, you are a woman, you are this, you are that, what caste, what creed, doesn't matter, that's what he's trying to bring about. <clears throat> Unfortunately, still Dalits have… Uh, have equal rights in by law, but socially we have not achieved it, still the same level of discrimination is happening. The poignant story that he talks about in his life when he was nine years of age, when he traveled from a village to 
go to some place where his father was working, near Pune or wherever. This uh, nine-year-old boy and uh, his rest of his family traveling, when they got off in the railway station, they were not allowed to stay in the… Mm, in the waiting room. No bullock cart was willing to take them to the destination. And after much haggling, some bullock cart wala decided to take it, but he puts them on the bullock cart and prefers to walk because he does not want to sit on the bullock cart along with these people because at that time it is believed that you will be polluted by their contact. Unfortunately, the same reality continues in rural India, if not to the same extent, but it continues still this idea another human being's touch could pollute you or even their shadow falling upon you could pollute you, unfortunately continues to this day. As a generation of people, we must put an end to this now because the very idea of India as a republic will fail if we do not fix this. In a country like India, whatever laws you make, particularly concerned with having certain privileges, misuse will be there. We have to weigh between use and misuse. A community for which for millennia, not for short periods of time, for millennia has been discriminated against that it is strongly believed their very birth is of a low nature. If you don't bring them up with some privileges so that they come level someday, uh, it would be very unfair. Just because today somebody is getting some reservation and you think uh, it is not fair because you didn't get to get into your college or whatever, I understand the angst that is there. We need to understand that's because of we have too much population for whatever infrastructure or education or the facilities we try to create. But reservation in many ways as I have seen, particularly in the south, maybe it's not been very well used in the north, but in the south, a whole… a whole generation of people from those communities, Dalit community, have gotten well educated, gotten well placed mainly because of reservation. Now resentment will come on very various levels. So this is a little adjustment with reservations may have to be done as time goes by. See for example, you can give admission to somebody, but you can't pass him because he belongs to a certain caste, then you're bringing down the competence levels in the country. They must be given opportunity and they must be given extra coaching to make up for whatever loss they've had due to lack of proper schooling. But we should not compromise on competence. And similarly for jobs, if you… they must have reservations so that they can enter the job situation. But promotions must come only with competence. Uh, this adjustment needs to happen, but uh, as we said in a democratic process, there is always… Uh, after all, an election has to be won. Nobody dares ever to talk about any change, whether positive or negative, which concerns because anything that concerns a particular community becomes a volatile election winning or losing kind of thing. I feel… I strongly feel that reservations in its… in the present level of development, where the Dalits are in this country, they still need it. But if a distinction is made between urban Dalits and rural Dalits, because the maximum discrimination and disadvantage happens in rural India, they must be given far more advantage than those who are already living in urban societies. It can also be made like this, first generation to get out of that social pit that unfortunately has been dug for them, 
they must be given reservation. Second generation, it must drop a little bit, third generation should be out of it. But for rural Dalits, it is very, very essential. There is no way out of that right now because the discrimination is so cruel. So we should not underestimate this and think, oh, they are getting all unfair advantage, you must take off the reservation, no. Such people should expose themselves to the rural situations in this country. How discriminatory it is, horribly discriminatory it is. They cannot even enter your house from the main door, they have to come from the back door. That is not acceptable for any human being. They can't drink uh, tea in a local tea shop, that is not acceptable, all right? So, this privilege of pedigree has to go and reservation is not a curse upon the country. We can fix some timeline, two generations if they come out of it, those who have come out of it should voluntarily go out of it. Something like this must be created. Dalits who have come out of it should share the reservation with those who have not come out of it. I mean, this is from responsibility only. See, these privileges we must understand or because of a certain existing injustice, we should not make the privileges themselves into another injustice. So, we need a more conscious society for that. We should stop looking at people as this community, that community, because all of us have only one vote. Nobody has extra two votes for one person. So that means by law we are equal. Socially that has to manifest. See, Ambedkar is a stellar example of taking charge of one's own life. From the type of background that he came, the intellectual brilliance that he displayed, is an inspiration for any generation. So social disadvantages did not put him down. Whether he spoke about it much or not is not the point. That's his life, taking charge of his life and becoming unstoppable no matter what kind of background you come from. But expecting every human being to do what he did is not fair. You have to facilitate something for them. It's a… Uh, it's utter shame. Personally, I feel ashamed that even today, though we are active in so many hundreds of villages, we are still not able to change that. I've made efforts unseen. All you will create is conflict, it'll explode. So, I feel for the Dalit community, education, 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 economic success must happen because of education and they must move out of those communities. That is when it will change or it has to be only generational change. In this generation, if it has to change, they must get all highly educated and move out of those village communities where no matter what, they're put to a disadvantage. It is… Uh, it's a very debilitating level of discrimination. Though this culture has been steeped in spirituality for thousands of years and always we've been told our life is our karma, that means our life is our making, in spite of that in the last few hundred years we've become such a helpless lot. I would say this is the consequence of being an occupied nation for nearly thousand years. Unless you suck up to somebody up there, there's no way you can survive. I think that's gone so deep into Indian psyche and uh, when a good leader comes up, when a capable leader comes, when a competent leader comes there, what he needs is many layers of leadership. Instead of that, what he gets is worship. 
what is he going to do with his worship? Unfortunately, we have not created those many layers of leadership because this is the psyche of an occupied nation, especially when it remains occupied for hundreds of years, where people slowly understand if you put up your head, you'll lose your head. Best thing is to put down, mind your own business and get away. If you want something, suck up to somebody who's sitting up there. This has gone very, very deep into us. I think in many ways Ambedkar fought against that, that do not create demigods out of leaders, political leaders. So one thing you should do with Ambedkar is, you do not worship Ambedkar, but you emulate his life. That's what is needed. Instead of emulation, he is getting uh, what? Worship. No, you need to emulate his life. But no matter what society sets for you, you are unstoppable. You have taken charge of your life. That's what we need to demonstrate. Thank you.